Hey everyone, if you've been following along with our video series then you've seen how we can create a lot of websites fast and make them SEO efficient, well SEO optimized in a very efficient way and SEO efficient, there you go. <laughs> so now we have to actually show you um, how we can pick something and recognize how much work we have to do to compete, right? Like what does it take to compete with an industry in a location? So let's take a look at a competitive city I'm gonna choose Seattle, Washington because, well, for one thing I live here and because it's very web savvy in town. Uh, the guys who are here usually have some kind of website guy who lives right around the corner. All right, now having said that, doesn't mean that all the businesses are paying their guys to keep them going in a very SEO optimized way. They're running around doing their business and if they're uh, at the top of the search results and no one's challenging them, that they don't need to do any extra work and that's, Part of what you notice actually when you start looking around. So I'll show you how we see that right away. Like which of the guys at the top are not doing anything new on their own, right? Uh, at least on site, we're talking about on site here. So here, here's the thing, I'm gonna step in and the first thing I wanna do, this is gonna be for DUI lawyer by the way, I just decided. So first thing I'm gonna do is choose apples to apples. So I will not choose number one. This is not a lawyer. This is a directory, Ustia, right? And they're nationwide. You know, they get like a 940,000 searches a month, right? So they're nationwide. So we're, we're not trying to make a website like that. We're trying to make a website like a lawyer website or take a lawyer website and make it a lot better. So let's take a look at this guy here. Okay, best Seattle DY attorney, 98% success rate. Cool message. 2% chance you lose. <laughs> anyway, um, that looks like the kind of guy we would call a competitor and he seems to be doing pretty well. He's getting about 344 searches a month himself, which is worth about $6,700 because this is a DUI lawyer we're talking about here. If they were paying per click, the amount they pay per click can range into the hundreds of dollars per click. We've seen it. Now, these guys are another lawyer, okay? Similar story, similar search traffic, similar amount of money yeah, in the game, okay? These guys, yeah, kind of same sort of story, except that they're bigger, right? They're DUI lawyers, so they're a group working together. So yeah, they're a little bigger. They get a little more search traffic and so on, but they're still a competitor, okay? So I just went through it. There's another one, another one, Another one, these guys are up here, right? Oh, not these guys. Again, we're back to top rated Seattle, Washington DUI lawyers for a company that's nationwide that get a million visitors a month. All right, so those are the guys on the front page, right? So we've got a few of those guys lined up and what I did was I opened all those sites and new tabs, that's why these links are purple, because yeah, I opened these guys up, the ones who are not directories. Let's go take a look at them real quick. So. How many web pages do these guys have that Google is indexing that are bringing some amount of traffic or no traffic each, but you know, they add up to their story, their topical authority. These guys have about 253 pages, okay? So, oh, that gives me the idea. Since they're one of the top rated guys, I might need something like 250 pages to compete with them, right? Now, if that sounds like, wait, 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 that's too many, that's too hard, that's gonna to be too much work, I have no idea how to create that, watch part two. Believe me, it's not out of control. The world has changed. Okay, next guys have 700 pages. <laughs> next guys have 177, okay. Now, we do pages really well from an SEO point of view. I would love to go through each of these guys and just pick one out and do an SEO comparison, you know, the Pepsi challenge, Pepsi taste test challenge here. <laughs> uh, I'll date myself with that. 257 pages, and I'm gonna make a point about them in a minute. Let me keep going. All right, 649, 256, okay? Next thing. Okay, that's how many pages they have on their site. We use the site colon command along with their domain name, all is one word. And the naked domain name, don't do anything with it. Don't put a www dot or an HTTPS because you might get a subset of the whole. We want the whole. So we got site colon domain name, naked domain name, okay? Now, here's the tool. We have tools, okay? 
So that tells me how many pages are on their site, but we have tools. How many pages on their site did they update in the last month? Let's say since Google's checking every month, you know, they're, they're actually checking every day, but they do a performance report on you every month and decide whether they should move you. But that depends on your competitors. Remember, if you sit perfectly still in the number one position and do nothing on site or off site, and the number two guy sits in the number two position, does nothing on site or off site, and there's no one else, then these two will forever stay in the same position. Because there's almost no way that Google's algorithms are going to favor the other guy unless Google starts looking at something totally new, right? Um, but one of those guys would have to make a change, right? So if they're just sitting there like that, chances are they'll never switch, okay? So if you have 100 people on down the list and no one does a thing, then the guys on the top, the guys at the top, the front page guys are probably entrenched, well, that opens the ability up to compete with them with newness of content. So my question is, have any of these guys felt any pressure lately? Do they need to create any newness of content? This guy's this web attorney here. He's number one. I'm just curious. If I hit tools, I can see uh, like how many pages has he put out in the past hour that Google's indexed or the past... 24 hours or a week, but I'm not really that interested. I want to at least see a month because that's the magic number for me. That's the most important thing. And the answer is none. Guy didn't do anything fresh in the past month. Now I could push it. What about the past year? And I'll probably see only five pages in one year. Heck, there are 12 months in one year. He doesn't even have a page every other month. This guy is not hardly updating his site. Certainly not lately, so I don't think he's doing anything with AI, let alone doing anything manually. No one's challenging him yet. Not enough. What about this next guy, 712? You'd think, wow, man, that guy must be pumping content out left and right. Past month, nothing. <laughs> the top two guys are, are leaving the door open for competition to just walk right in and draw their sword, you know, because they're not even trying to put up their walls. They're not doing anything, okay? That's called dumb. <laughs> and you know what you're gonna find? It's all over the internet, it's rampant. Whoever's sitting fat, dumb, and happy doesn't need to do anything until the walls start crashing in. They go, whoa, and they run to do something about it. All right, what about these guys? This is what, third guy's down or something? Um, past month. Nothing. <laughs> what about these guys? <gasps> it's going to change, isn't it? I, I got a feeling it's going to change. I can feel it. Oh, they did. So of those dates I saw, March 26, April 8, this one was just eight days ago. And then April 8 and March 29th, I thought eight days ago is the most closest to now. I'm curious if by now they're using AI. So I opened that page, this uh, criminal defense lawyer and Port Orchard page, right? Port Orchard criminal defense lawyer page. You know what I did? I highlighted the content on the page. And you know what I did? I pasted that here. And you know what I found out? 92% <laughs> of it is most likely AI generated. <laughs> and check this out. All the yellow is, is what they think is AI generated without being like paraphrased or changed or human written, right? So they just, um, human written down here is like no coloring. So you know what it looks like to me? Somebody is carefully updating some of their pages and then just going through and reading them and making some little extra points to help make the page perfect, you know, which is just cool. Right? I've seen a lot of pages that are 100% AI generated and the guys are on the front page. But if you're going to be a lawyer, then yeah, you better double check the reading and the writing. And you may as well dial it in and really reassure somebody you're the guy. So, you know, just go through it and see if there's one more thing. Look at that. They added this. These relationships can be instrumental in negotiating with prosecutors and potentially leading to more favorable outcomes in your case. If they felt like AI didn't make that cool, 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 cool point, and they want to just make sure it's crystal clear, then they would add it, right? 
Also, the attorney's reputation and standing in the legal community can also carry weight and may influence how your case is approached. Okay, that also is a really good thing to know. So if it wasn't there with AI, then they just made the page better by throwing it in. Okay, what about anyone else, right? Well, guess what? I found one other guy. And um, I think it's this guy, this Emerald City Law Group. With all their pages, whatever it was, 256. That one, Seattle Violent Crimes Lawyer, okay? That they just did, it's just, uh, last month. But, you know, so anyway, this is what it looks like. And again, I highlighted the majority of the page. And you know what I did? I took out lists like this because that's going to make it seem like it was auto-generated. But no, I don't, I'm not trying to do that measurement. I took this out. It's a, you know, the bullet point list. I got rid of a lot of the stuff like this. Um, just to, and I also had to get under the word count, but just to see what it would say. So 42% of the text. So they are writing and using AI at the same time. They're just being smart about it. Okay. And what I think is cool is that we also have tools to append to pages. So not only can we write to a page, if we wanna keep the page fresh, we can come back later and add more to the pages. So we can throw in another section. So in case somebody's out writing us, we can go make our page a little more full to compete back, you know, to get something else going in there. Um, that's cool. So not just can we create pages, but we can append to pages. That's really, really powerful. Okay, so, if I was saying, now that I have a strong sense of one, the top competitors are using AI. If I want to compete, I better use AI. The rest of the top competitors haven't even done anything. They're fat, dumb, and lazy. Right? That's the phrase, right? Fat, dumb, and lazy? That's the phrase, isn't it? Gosh, I haven't heard that in years. <laughs> fat, dumb, and lazy. Uh, so, they're entrenched. And what that means is they are ripe for beating, especially for another reason. Okay? Aside from the fact that they only have a few hundred pages, we can compete with that really, really fast. We can outright them in an hour, okay? An hour, two. Um, we, it, you'll see what I mean soon. Um, the keyword difficulty is not even that high. It's a 23. It's pretty reasonably easy. It's not hard, okay? And these guys have a DR of two. <laughs> Domain reading of four. They, so they're fat, dumb, and lazy for real. They haven't even put a lot into their websites. They just probably been around a while and nobody beat them. But look at all the money this guy gets by being up here. Look at all the money this guy gets by being here. Look at all the money this guy gets by being here. It's because really they're showing up for more keywords and they're in different places on every keyword. So the question is how many keywords are they in play for? Usually the more keywords you're in play for, the more money you can make, right? Very, very agreeably obvious, right? The more keywords you're in the play for, the more traffic you can get, the more money you can make. Okay. Now, having said that, and even that comes with the question of where are they on every keyword, but we'll save that for another topic, shall we? The general rule applies to be in the game for as many keywords as you can um, because there are different variations on keywords. DUI lawyer, DWI lawyer, DUI attorney, DWI attorney, Seattle, Wa, Seattle, Washington, Seattle, Seattle, DUI lawyer, Seattle, DWI attorney, and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on, right? And then throw in a few extra concepts and you've got all these combinations that come out of it. Hundreds of keywords you're trying to show up for. Now, we've established that a couple of these guys, two on the front page, are actually trying to add new content and get those walls up, probably because they smell the the in the air that the storm is coming that you know competitors are going to figure out what's going on and start in on them that's one thing second especially because this is weak this is one easy fort to to concentrate your army on and go knock down your army of web pages your army of websites if you wanted to start foistering yourself to the top in this and you had several websites working together smartly you can pull it off and that's the kind of thing that we help you with now having said that the other thing I want to say is what if I went all the way down and I'm looking for somebody with low hanging fruit okay who's not on the front page but they need to have like really low search traffic that's the biggest number I want to see 
They're only getting like 11 clicks a month. They're in position 18, but only 11, even though they show up for 52 keywords. So you know what that means? Their website must be pretty weak because they're not showing up very high on these keywords. They're showing up really low. And yeah, with a domain rating of seven, only seven out of 100, sure. Because their competitors are higher. A domain rating of 12 beats the heck out of a domain rating of seven by about three times over because it's a logarithmic curve going up the ladder, okay? To get from one number to the next, next number to the next, it's always harder and harder and harder to do, okay? Now, I opened those guys, all right? And I thought, not bad. First of all, they're not that far from the front page. They're on like page two. Second of all, um, my, 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 I'll show you the other guys I met. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you. They only got 10 pages on their site. 10. 10. <laughs> I didn't even bother to look at this. <laughs> none. <laughs> if they have none in the past month, they also have none in the past week. Okay. Just so you know, I mean, that's, that's the way it works. <laughs> but they only have 10. So do you know what? These guys are in position 18. If we just added a bunch of pages to their site that are topically authoritative, um, that already can push them up. That already is an algorithmic improvement to their site, and it's a big one. And then if we had all the SEO decked out, that'll really push them up because they can show up for a lot more keywords than their 52. Not only that, if we backlink them a bit, if we add some external authority links, we can just shove these guys up onto the front page. They are somebody I should be pitching, okay? Because they would pay me a few thousand dollars just to create like 150 more 250 more pages onto their website, okay? Yeah, they probably paid 2,500 for 250 pages, about 10 bucks a page, that are decked out really well in terms of SEO and have external authority links and incoming backlinks, all that kind of thing, just to get that done and then look at more, you know? And that's without a guarantee of getting them a certain distance up. It's just doing part of the job that they absolutely must have. And maybe all they need but they must have that, okay? Period. <laughs> if they wanna compete, they can't do it with a 10 page website, that's for sure. All right, so what's this other guy I wanted to point out? I was trying to go lower. I wanna show you, guys who slip usually get so far behind. If I wanted to help this guy with a DR of two, who only gets seven searches a month, which is worth like 80 bucks a month in traffic, he's way down here, position 25. So he's showing up for 151 keywords, but he's gotta be really, really low because hey, he only has a domain rating of two, okay? Here's the point, I opened his website. Oh, I can't even help this guy. You know the first thing I saw? <laughs> it wouldn't even let me visit the site unless I went out of my way to say, show me anyway, even though it could be dangerous. <laughs> Cause it's HTTP, this guy, doesn't know what he's doing. Look at this thing with this tiled background. You see how dated this is? I, I wonder if he's copyright 2015 and he probably updated it from the original 2009 that it might have been. I don't know, but there's only, you know, God, there's like next to no pages on this guy's site. How many? How many? I mean, there's no point in looking. This guy's so far out of the game. Okay, he's got 44. Man, he put effort into it once at least. And he was probably doing a lot better back in that day. But by now, no, man, it's no. I'd have to sell him a new site, you know. I, I wouldn't even begin to try to improve the SEO on this thing from way back then. No, we need a new site, man. It's got to be responsive. It's got to have HTTPS. It's got to have schema, all the stuff I'm sure he doesn't have. All right, so just, and, and so what's that worth? 6,500 bucks, you know, something like that. Building a new website with everything built into it really, really, really well uh, for a lawyer to rank for lawyer keywords, 6,500 bucks I'd charge him for a site. And that would be redo a site, get his pages in, and then make the massive topical authority with um, you know minimizing content gaps, no overlapping topics, so Google's not confused which page is supposed to show for a keyword or a related keyword. Don't ever give Google two pages. One's for uh, DUI Attorney Seattle, and the other one is for Seattle DUI Attorney. 
<laughs> don't do that. Make one page that works for all the combinations that are that related. Okay. All right. Guess what we're going to do? If we were doing this work for this guy who's all the way down there, or doing this work for the other guy who's further up on the page, who's, you know, wow. I mean, we could push this guy onto the front. Whichever guy, yeah, 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 these guys. We could push this guy onto the front just by at least adding a stack more pages to his site, right? Uh, if we were to do that, uh, how would we do it? That's in the next video I'm going to show you because that's just it. We're making all these sites, which is incredibly valuable. One site's like doing one push-up. You're not going to rank with one site. I've had a lot of people say, are you allowed to have more than one site? It's like, are you kidding me? Have you, we all know who Tony Robbins is, right? Do you think his face is only on one site on the internet? Every time you've ever seen him, it's in one place on one site. No, <laughs> there are a ton of other sites out there. There are like resellers out there who want to sell the tickets to his events. There are information sites about famous people and their backgrounds. God knows there are tons and tons of sites. A lot of them are informational, a lot of them are motivational, a lot of them mention some of the leaders, and they have, you know, these tree branches going off in different directions to all the major players. Tony Robbins is one, Jay Abraham's another, all the other guys you can think of. But if you're only on one site, you're just too small. If there are no reseller sites, partner sites, co-partner sites, co-op sites, if there are no information sites, if no one else is mentioning you, then you are a speck of dust in cyberspace with no constellation anywhere. No, nothing shines light on your site out there on the internet. But your competitors, they're part of a constellation. You know, so you either make that constellation that you float around in and tether yourself to a few places, uh, and then Google takes you seriously, or you're, you're just on an island all by yourself and your website has no connections to anything. It's like, hello, and there's no one around it. No one's looking at it. They're all driving by, right? Doesn't do you any good. <laughs> one website's like one push-up. You're not going to get anywhere. But we're going to say, let's take all the effort this guy did and or if this guy wants a new site and we're going to offer him a whole topical authority makeshift, revamp, so that we can create a bunch of pages in their sitemap that help really shove them up. That way their whole website gets to look like this anyway, but we're gonna integrate a little bit more. There might be, um, that might be a hyperlink going to one of their deeper level pages, the sitemap, and then the pages link to each other and they have their own sitemap. We could create some other button that goes to one of the pages in their sitemap, you know? We could add another couple of buttons or something or another row of four buttons that go to like four pages in this new stack of pages we're going to make for them. In other words, we're going to weave those pages in as well so that when Google bots hit these top level pages, they can find those pages which connect to the rest, to the rest, to the rest, to the rest. So Google says, oh, they're live pages. They do connect to the front page. There's links to them. Okay. And we'll go through a few of his pages to make sure that we also get links in there like this one. We'll get another one in there that points to another one of those deeper level pages. Same with another one, same with another one. We just knit them together with some interlinks like that. And when you knit with interlinks, that really has, like this is an interlink. If I click, it'll go to another page of the same site. See that? Google loves interlinking. The more, the merrier. The more you interlink, the merrier. Google also wants external authority links and backlinks, <laughs> but Google's looking what you do, okay? So I think I made my point. What we're going to do in the next video is see just how fast we can set up that kind of topical authority for a guy in an industry. So once you find an industry you can compete with, and I would do what? Like either I would offer work to clients, okay? And then I would offer that they buy a website, run a website, or that they're going to buy leads from me, right? Or I'll be, well, yeah, I mean, buy leads from me or buy the calls from me as they come in. Either they buy the guys who close at a high level dollar amount per closing guy, or they pay a flat fee for each guy I can send them who gives them a call on the phone, whether they close or not, and they're gonna pay for all those guys. By the way, for those of you who don't know, there are places where you can rent a phone number, just a bogus phone number. That's a typical phone number. And you can rent them for like a buck and a half a month. And it'll record the calls 
to MP3. And you can put those phone numbers on the websites you generate and have them recall instantly another phone number, the real guy. So when somebody lands on your site and they call that phone number now, it will call that guy. So you can say, call that guy at this number. His website says, call him at that number, whatever his number is. Your website says, call him at that number. No problem. That's perfectly fine. So when anyone calls that number, call gets recorded. So then you get this whole list in the back area of wherever it is you rent your phone numbers. And it'll be all the recordings. And it'll tell you how long they are. Where they came in from even. Like area code or whatever. Or IP address. You know, therefore geolocate. What you're really interested in is the length of the call. Any calls longer than say two minutes, three minutes. And what's that mean? Those are chargeable to the account. So unless for some reason the guy's wife accidentally had to do a search for him because she couldn't remember his number and then called him. Because <laughs> he'll know to keep these incoming calls, you know, off the books unless they're important. I've had somebody goes, what if he says, hey, uh, can you hang up and call me this other number? Then the answer is that's a default charge. First of all, it got recorded. You heard both sides of the conversation. Um, you're not going to publish it, but it's for your rights. You have the right to hear that conversation. Not act on it, but hear it. Okay. Uh, and so what would you do with that? You'd say, hey, you told him to call the other number. That's an automatic charge. It's part of our agreement because I don't know what happened to that guy. Right. So there you go. You just set up rules with guys. Oh, you don't want to pay for that guy? Well, I could take all these phone numbers and redirect them to your competitor across the street. How would you like them apples? <laughs> Not trying to be mean, but I'm saying it's easy to protect what you do well as you do it. Okay, I made plenty enough points here. Let's go to the next topic where we're going to break down literally how we just set up a project super fast with a couple of pre-made um, GPTs. Okay, so I'll show you how this works and this is a blast. And those of you who are getting in and you're using our tools, you get access to all this stuff so you can auto-generate all this stuff for anybody you want to make content for or for your own affiliate sites or whatever it is. Okay, this is fun. And, and those of us who are doing work for you, yeah, this is what we do. We use GPT Smartly to create great content for you and then we create those web pages and then if you want to proofread the pages, you can. If you want anyone else to, you can. Uh, fact of the matter is we go through the stuff well and we have incredibly cool prompts that stay within the right parameters and uh, you can definitely check out some samples and say, hey, do this, don't do that, a little more of this, a little less of that and it's like, okay, we'll engineer that into the prompt before we actually, you know, and keep showing you until you're like, dang, that is perfect. Show me five more. Those are awesome. Go ahead. You know, and that's it. It's like, all right, piece of cake. We'll get going. So whether we do one website for you or a ton, right? And by the way, where do you get this kind of service? And the answer is website-installer.com. You'll see my information up here. You can contact me. Uh, go to professional services. There are services that start cheap and they work their way up. There is a breakdown in print for what each of these are. And there's a video for what each of these are. So you're able to absolutely understand everything that's happening on this page. Okay. And you can see what you want to do. And any questions, give me a call. All right. Enough of this video. Next one's going to be a lot of fun. But take a break. In the meantime, get some coffee. Take a walk around the block. Let your head spin. The possibilities are insane.